In this video, we're going to discuss naming ionic compounds and interpreting names of ionic compounds. So our naming rules for ionic compounds are actually straightforward and simple compared to covalent molecules, which is nice. Um, in general, the name of the cation is written just as the name appears on the periodic table. And then the anion um, name from the periodic table is added after it. And it's given a new suffix, an I-D-E ending to it. That means something like um, nitrogen, if it's the anion, will become nitride. So we've got this new suffix on our, our element name. We don't specify the charge on the ion when we name it. Um, because in theory, someone can figure that out on their own, just using a periodic table. We don't specify the number of ions either, um, again, because you could figure that out just figuring out how to balance the charge, as we've done before. So if we have sodium fluor and fluoride coming together to form an ionic bond, we would keep our sodium cation name the same as we would read it on the periodic table. And then our fluorine... which will be our anion, we'll lose that I-N-E ending and replace it with I-D-E. We get fluoride instead of fluorine. Do the same thing with magnesium and chlorine. When they come together to form a um, ionic compound, we'll just use the magnesium name to start with from the periodic table. And then chlorine, we'll lose that I-N-E ending and replace it with an I-D-E. And this will be written second, chloride. We're always putting the cation first and the anion second in our name. And notice here we had two chlorines, but we didn't have to specify that because anyone who has a periodic table should, in theory, be able to figure out the charge of magnesium, the charge of chlorine, and then figure out the ratio from that like we did in our previous video. So then what about deriving the formula from a name of an ionic compound? Um, well, let's do, um, let's do aluminum. something we've seen before, aluminum oxide. So if I read a name like aluminum oxide, the first thing I'm gonna do is identify my cation and identify my anion to determine what the chemical formula would be. The cation is always written first and the anion is always written second. Now I can take my um, aluminum name and find it on the periodic table and get the chemical formula symbol. The oxide takes a little bit of interpreting. I'm really looking at this first part of the name and saying, oh, well, I have a nonmetal called oxygen. So oxide must be referring to oxygen. So I've got aluminum oxygen. Now I need to determine the charge that each would have. Aluminum is in the third group, so it's plus three. And oxygen is in the, the sixth group, so it'll have a negative two charge. And then I balance the charges. And this is where we showed our crisscross rule before. And so I would have aluminum two, oxygen three, taking care to write my cation first, um, and then my oxygen, which is my anion second, and using subscripts to show the ratio that these combine to form an overall zero charge. <laughs> 